All right. Okay, everybody, we are going to go live here and start right at 10 o'clock. So if you're in the chat, let us know who you are and where you're from. And we'll share that with you so you can Sweet. see if you know anyone. I know a couple people from work are going to uh, join and jump in. So oh, good. We'll see. We'll see. See how much they heckle me. <laughs> yeah. Heckling is always fun. Well, if they heckle me too much, I'll just charge them extra if they want to buy stuff from me. So. Right. <laughs> oh, you heckled me in, in a live. So. Okay. <laughs> All right. Dan Murphy from Wisconsin. Nice. Are you hearing my voice okay? or? Okay. I'm, at, I'm almost at full volume. Okay. Um, <laughs> or let's move it closer. I, this is, is this, if this is normal, I can, I can keep doing this as closer I can. I think you're good. Okay. Okay. I'm going to up it on here a little bit, Amy. Hello, hello. Hello. Hi there. Yeah. Come on in, guys. We, uh, Watch we got a couple seats. Cords. We do have some <laughs> cables because we're uh, live streaming as well. Sorry about that. <laughs> It's all good. Where are you guys from? New Hampshire. New Hampshire. Oh, that's a long, just for this. I say that's a long drive. <laughs> what part? Which we stay here, Okay. My um, my wife, his mother, are uh, from the Seacoast Exeter area. So, yep. uh, so love it there. So we stay here. We, we we're Winterbirds. We, we're at, actually we're staying in uh, Macy's Ferris. Nice. Very cool. Well, you guys made it back. That's awesome. No, we, we love New Hampshire. Uh, we go, try to go back every every couple years or so. Uh, my brother-in-law has a place there in Hampton Falls, and mm -hmm. I love it up there. It's beautiful. It is. I've been, I presume, you've been up to Acadia? Um, I've been as far north. I don't recall Acadia. doesn't mean I haven't been it's there. It's National Park. Yeah. Like yeah. Harbor. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. beautiful up there. Um, All right. You're getting some people in here, Tim. we got Anita Schimmel from Lake Havasu. She sounds Anita? suspect. She, she sounds a little familiar. we got Jody. Jody's somewhere in the Midwest. Uh, John, Joan from Pennsylvania. Dr. Polishki from Rockville, Virginia. Or Randy. Cool. Yeah, so if you guys are on live, we have folks in the studio as well as the live stream today, so it's going to be a lot of fun. We can throw questions at Tim from every direction. Love it. All right, we got two minutes and we're going to get going. Okay. Volume good? Okay. Tony from South Texas. Gabe. Gabe is local. He says he wished he could be here in person, but he'll be here next time. And this was good timing because we just got machines in, so they're taking up the whole space. So, <laughs> perfect time. It happens. <laughs> You're gonna take off your mic when he starts. Yes, hundred percent. Because I can hear you like talking. And oh yeah, yeah. I'm only mic'd up for the first minute, and then I'll be turning it off. All right. Connie from South Jersey and Robert from Louisiana. So you got them all over, Tim. There's nice, big variety. We're at 10. Okay, ten o'clock. All right. Well, thanks everybody online and in person for coming in. Uh, we got a special demonstration today. You don't get to watch my ugly face, so that's good. You get, get to, to watch, watch Tim's get ugly my face. ugly face. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, real quick, couple things before we get started. We do have people in the studio as well as online. So Amy's going to be moderating online. She'll be taking any questions and asking Tim. So if you have questions online, please feel free to shout him out. He likes questions, mm -hmm. as well as you guys here in person. So if you have a question, just get his attention and feel free to ask him because he likes interaction. Love the interaction. A lot more fun. Uh, a quick couple of things. We do have the ornament contest going. You have nine days left to get your ornament here to Turner's Warehouse. They're due by the 20th. And you really want to enter an ornament if you haven't done it, because not only are you helping raise money for St. Jude, which is the main focus, 
but Record Power has given us a Herald lathe to give away. So everyone who enters an ornament will have a chance at that Herald lathe. And Tim can attest that it's an amazing machine. He's been using one for how long now? Um, almost five years. I have one of the first eight that were in the States. Yeah, so I mean, great machine. And really, uh, that's a super cheap lottery ticket if you ask me just to, you know, do something for charity. Ed, go ahead and have, grab a chair. Hey, Tim. Hey, how right. you doing, Ed? Good to see you. So you have nine days left. They need to be here in person by the 20th. Um, shout out to all of our sponsors. I can't remember them all offhand, but we've got some amazing sponsors that are putting up prizes and they're all doing it to raise money for St. Jude. So uh, we'll talk about that again in, in another video, as well as Amy has all the stuff online. Uh, if you are watching this online, please like and subscribe so we can keep doing more demos like this for you. We're gonna try to bring in expert presenters like Tim and uh, building the audience is good. And for all you guys in person, we will have this less congested next time. So <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> all right, so let's, enough of that stuff. Let's talk about Tim here. Tim is from Mesa, Arizona. He's been turning 30 years. He specializes in small scale and uh, like Christmas stuff and, and holiday stuff, but don't let that fool you. He can turn a giant bowl whenever he wants. Uh, he's demoed for Record Power, Rikon, uh, Nova, Woodfast, Woodfast, all over the world as well as the U.S. I always called him a SKU expert, and he said that's kind of his favorite tool. Uh, <laughs> if you want to check out his work, check out Turning by Tim on Instagram. And I think that's enough. I'm going to let you take over. Awesome. Thanks, Tim. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm going to try to get used to all the, the cameras and stuff. I'm better with people face to face, so that will do what I can. Um, as Chad said, I've been turning for about 30 years. Uh, I've done, uh, as, I've done all, demoed all over the world. I've uh, had a great time doing that. Um, I've always kind of gravitated to the, the small scale, uh, mostly because that's, I had a small lathe for so many years, uh, but I can do big. In fact, I've, at one of the shows I demonstrated for a record, I turned a 24 inch by eight inch deep bowl on the Herald. So it's, it, it can handle it. Uh, so it's a good stout lathe. Um, I've been doing, and since we're, I'll talk about the snowman since that's what we're gonna do today. Uh, the snowman craze kind of picked up probably, I would say about five, six years ago. A friend of mine online um, named Holly Denny kind of uh, kicked off the craze. There's been a lot of people turning snowman for years and doing great work, but the kind of, I would say it's kind of a craze the last few years where people are turning, a lot more people are turning snowman and posting about it anyway. And she kind of kicked it off. And one of the things that really struck, stuck, made hers stick out versus others was that she always had a really whimsical silly faces on them so there was always a lot of fun uh involved in it so a lot more people started doing it um and there's quite a few people that i like to look at for influences as far as the snowman um just for again keeping it light keeping it fun keeping it whimsical that uh really helped it um, um linda ferber who used to be one of the uh, board people for aaw she did does some really neat jobs with her snowman in fact at one point she made has made them out of box, made boxes out of them, so you could actually take the hat off and store little things inside of them. I've even seen somebody make a box out of one and paint the body of the of the snowman with uh, appliance enamel paint, so that they could and put the, the dry erase markers in, so they could draw the faces on it, depending on what they wanted the, the, the face to be for that day. So there's a lot of things that are available for it. Um, and I think a lot of the times some people get kind of intimidated about doing on or taking on a new project or type of project because of the the stuff that goes into it and you really don't have to do a whole lot to get into making a snowman um the eyes can be anything uh, you can use buttons i've seen people who uh, do hot glue buttons uh who use tacks uh, uh carpet tacks any kind of num number of things that you can do um my first set of uh snowmen that i did i used i and you can see a couple of them here don't even have eyes um so Keep in mind with making some of your, your snowmen, they don't have to necessarily be perfect because when you make a snowman, are they perfect? Not really. So there's nothing that can really be perfect about them. The only place I would say that would need to be any mindful of any kind of a design ideas, and you can always want to make sure that your proportions are right, correct, but is the joint between the hat and the head. You want to make sure the, the hat brim, or the and I'll show this more as I go along, is not... Too, too large or too small 
in relation to the head. And I'll, I'll show you what I mean when I get going. But so with that in mind, I'm just going to stop talking and I'm going to start making some stuff here. I'm going to start off. I'm going to make. Uh, I'm going to start off with a probably one of these smaller ornament hats. And I'm going to do two variations of hats today. One's going to be for a a standard or a standalone, and one's going to be for an ornament style. And I'll show the slight variation on how to do both of those. So this one will be an ornament. And this is my first time using this lathe, so bear with me. <laughs> Hey guys, how you guys doing? He has the wood turning store in Texas. And if anybody has any questions about any of the, the pieces or the tools I'm using or the drives or anything like that, by all means, please ask. I do tend to turn pretty fast, so if you have any questions, by all means. I do have a few tools from a different manufacturer, so if you have any questions about what am I using, uh, please don't hesitate to ask. My switch is over here, that's why I keep doing that. <laughs> Sorry, so I don't have a nervous tick, I promise. I have other issues, but we're not talking about those today. <laughs> is somebody laughing at me online already? <laughs> this is my first time using this lathe. <laughs> Exactly. I like it. I like I like the the, the heft of it. It's, it's definitely very stable, and I like that very much. So a lot of people um, tell me that I have an addiction problem. Um, I have. I think 24 chucks now. <laughs> you, well, you probably. <laughs> and I think the only uh, the only real true help is going to be more chucks. So. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> so whenever I, whenever I'm turning somebody or when I'm going somewhere, how many chucks do you have now, Tim? I have 24. <laughs> it's like, but I want more. <laughs> okay, right there.
So what I'm doing now, besides eating dust, is um, shaping the bottom of the hat. I don't make them perfectly flat because most top hats, when you see a top hat, they're not flat. They're gonna be a slight curve to them. So I'm gonna have a little curve here and I'll show that here, uh, if you can see that. If not, you'll definitely see it when after I uh, drill the hole here. This is the bottom of the hat. Say again? Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> no, I, I messed that up, sorry. I went back to the did something. <laughs> so this is going to be um, a weird little step that I put in. This is a step that I do, and it's to aid in my finishing process. So what I do is I actually do a little bit of a large counterbore here. Uh, part of the reason I do this is so that when I go through my finishing process, I have several little stands that I make and I have laying around my shop here. It's just a piece of wood with a 16 penny nail on it. So what I'll do is I'll set that on there. You can see kind of like my little display here on my little trees. Uh, that's the same basic idea here. Um, or trees, hats. Those are hats. <laughs> I need more coffee apparently. So Yeah, that's the only function of this hole right here. Exactly, makes it a little bit easier. Then the other thing I'll do here is since I'm gonna make this gonna be an ornament, I need to have a hole all the way through and I'll explain the hole all the way through. So I've made this little handy drilling device. It's a wire installer's bit that I get at Home Depot, Lowe's, whatever. I just made a handle for it. And what I'll do here, back this out of the way a little bit. Find that hole again. Just kind of push through, push in a little bit. Yeah. So essentially, if you look at the curved hats that I do, what this is is it's going to be kind of a a stability uh, or a stabilizing effect to it. The reason being is that uh, the glue alone uh, doesn't always hold it. Uh, you, it, it can break. That's, it, if it breaks, that's where it's going to break. It's going to come apart at the glue joint. Say again? You could, but depending on how thin you get it um, or how, how narrow you make them, the dowel pin uh, won't bend. So at least with the wire, I can bend it with the shape. So what I'm going to do here... I'm going to finish up the bottom of this hat. Yeah, that's all it is. Just a long twist bit is all it is. Just a little bit of sanding. Now sanding with most turners is where the difficult part comes in. A lot of people like to put a lot of pressure, especially if the shape isn't exactly the way they want. So they'll use heavier grit with a real heavy hand. 
or 40, or even 40, <laughs> and then they'll never get the standing lines out. Uh, so uh, every now and then you'll see, you'll see somebody who is in a turning demonstration, especially if they have friends or hecklers in the audience, uh, they'll, they'll bring in uh, some, I've seen people bring in a piece of paper with like two rocks gr gr glued to it to call it two grit for somebody to harass with somebody who's using a lot of heavy grit. So I've got a half inch hole here. I'm gonna show this real quick. And now this is where I'm gonna start making <clears throat> this section right here. I'm gonna basically, this is gonna be the brim right here. So I'm gonna make this section here. And I don't have a tried or true method. I, I really just eyeball it. What I'll do is I want to leave roughly about an eighth of an inch distance between this width here and this here. So it's gonna be about a quarter inch wider than this. If I wanna be really obsessive compulsive with it, what I can do is use my calipers to do it. Uh, so, I, so that's a half inch, I'd do uh, three quarters of an inch if I really wanted to be that obsessive about it. Um, I've done enough of them that I can eyeball it. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna move, remove some of this material here, then I'll, I'll start shaping the uh, band portion there. Tim, do you know about how big the piece of wood was before you started? This is a two by, about a six, five inch piece, two by five. It's actually a piece of nice, really curly, colorful walnut that I got from here. <laughs> Every time. Okay. So from here, I'm just going to remove the turt. So one of my influences when I started making these odd, really tall, really long shaped top hats or for my snowman is I really started watching and started taking the influences from shows that I'd seen like from Nightmare Before Christmas or uh, Box Trolls, the top hats for the, the characters in the, the Box Trolls movies and watching movies with my kids were these really ridiculous uh, features on these hats and things like that. It's like, well, that'd be kind of fun to do. So it's like, liking Tim Burton, liking that design, it's like, well, why not? <laughs> so. All I'm doing here is just kind of defining the, the band. Not too worried about that. It's a nice little gouge there, but that'll be gone. Because that what that's what happens. <laughs> the the thing that people get really intimidated with the skew is because that is, if you present the tool wrong, that's what happens. And some people, when something like that happens, they're just like, oh, freak out about it. 
It's part of it. It's part of learning how to use a tool. And even on days when you're used to using tools, <laughs> it, happens. stuff happens. Exactly. You don't, don't have to always have, um, don't always have the best look, uh, luck with that. So when that happens, you just improvise, improvise or change tools. He's like, you know what? Yeah. <laughs> Not nervous, are we? Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that shape right there. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to do a little bit of sanding, not a lot. Because most of the sanding you do with these is going to be after you do the assembly. And some people are saying, assembly, what are you talking about? Well, this is, this is the part where newer turners, particularly newer turners, have the hardest time. Because you've got a nice shape here, you uh, produce some nice, got a nice piece of wood, and then uh, there we go. Probably the only thing I'm going to finish sand on this is going to be the uh, band and the brim here. I just go to 220. That's just my preference. I'm... I'm most of the time, I'll say most of the time, not all the time, I, I, I always get, I do get disappointed in my sanding results from time to time as well, but most of the time I'm happy with what I do as far as my sanding up to 220. Um, sanding, sanding is like, um, well, let's just say sanding and sandpaper is like another, is a tool also. A lot of, a lot of turners, uh, especially a lot of professionals say, uh, you need to be able to produce a glass finish with your tools uh, instead of do instead of just relying on sandpaper, while there is some merit to that, the, the reality is the sandpaper is another tool. So you need to learn how to use it properly, and get to get the best results that you want. Uh, so, yes, that they're both true. So, long and short of it, at this point, what I would do here is decide how I'm going to uh, treat the hat band here. You can do. I know a couple people use uh, like a piece of oily exotic and what they'll do is they'll burn this and get, just give it a darker color. Uh, I know some people that will use paint. I've done both. Uh, another thing you could do is use a chatter tool. Let's see if I can get this down low enough to have that show that off here. I do have a chatter tool here I'm gonna try to do. A chatter tool is just a, essentially just a piece of tool steel 
relatively thin and you slow the lathe down, um, it allows this to basically flex. It's a sharpened point here and it just will chatter on the surface as it goes. And if this is slow enough, we'll see if that did any kind of effect. And it did, it did tear, kind of tear up a little bit here, but you get see the little shatter effect here. So what I can do, since that's a little uh, chewed up, what I'll do is I'll hit it with a little bit of 220, and I'll call that good. And then if you touch that up with a little bit, or not touch it up, if you cover it with a little bit of paint, and do the same kind of thing that creates a nice little effect as far as uh, creating a different colored brim. And you can see I've, I've done that on a couple of those there. You can even take off uh, and go through a wood burner, which I've done if you, I'll show you on one of these a little bit later. Um, you can actually touch up the brim and have a nice little detailed uh, burn effect on it. Now, <clears throat> before I really get there, and I'll talk about that more when I get there, you don't have to spend a lot of money on a wood burning kit to start producing any kind of an effect that is, a decorative effect, it's really neat. I started off with a, a soldering iron and I had really nice effects with that. And my first few snowmen, all the eyes, the smiles, and things like that were all just done with the tip of a, a soldering iron, just gotta get really hot. Occasionally I have to clean it off with a wire brush uh, just to kind of, all, all the pitch that gets built up on it, just like any wood burning tip and just to touch it back up. And it'll, you can tell when you're getting really hot cause it'll burn really fast. It's like, oh, okay, <laughs> let's slow down a little bit and not put so much pressure on there. All right, now what I'm gonna do here, this is where, this is the area that produces a lot of terror in new turners. First thing I'm going to do is figure this out. There we go. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. And I'm going to draw just, I call it a witness line. Down the center here. You see that right there in the camera? And then I'm going to section this off. Let's see, I've done one, two, I like three sections. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do in varying widths here. I'm going to do one here, cut there. I'm going to cut right about here. Now, I'm going to cut these by hand, and it's going to look like I'm not cutting off very much or as or much of an angle. The thing to remember is when you're cutting these, is you don't want to cut drastic angles in these because like anything over two to five degrees is gonna produce a really wonky angle on the end of it. So to create something along these lines, it's really kind of a very short, very, very shallow angle. So let me go ahead and show you how I'm gonna do that. Did I put that over here somewhere? Oh, here it is. I just have a trusty little pocket saw I've got it, had it for a number of years. I'm not even sure where I got it anymore, but. <laughs> yeah, this one's got a Japanese blade in it, though. Uh, I think I got this at Woodcraft eons ago. So you notice my angle here. It's not a very, very long angle here. So what I'm going to do is I'll start the cut here. figure the best angle here. Okay. That's the first piece there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do kind of an opposite angle on this next section here. Hey Andy, how you doing? Yes.
about channel locks? Do you have any channel locks? Uh, or big wrench? <laughs> <laughs> Just a wrench. Uh, a... Yep. <laughs> Let's get to a break here. <laughs> uh, well, well, actually, while he's doing that, I'll, I'll need to take this off anyway at some point, but I'll go ahead and do this. I need to clean up these because these are all going to be glue joints. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Use a sanding disc. Yep, um, and then actually we um, we uh, at one point did uh, we also made these here as well. Um, go to the the plastic ones as well. Um, made the sanding rings here as well. So I, I have different grits. So this one's an 80 grit. I was using 120 grit for a while. Um, but I've found out through a couple different um, applications that the while it created a nice fine joint and the, the, the glue joint disappeared, created a weak glue joint because it was a little too too nice. <laughs> so 80 grit seems to be for this application seems to be about the best. So what I'm going to do here, feel free there. So I'm just going to clean these joints up because we can see that they're really not that great. So and most of this stuff is going to car all this little tear out here. Most of that's going to be carved and sanded away anyway. So. It's not a big deal. to get that off. It's my spindle adapter. Um, I'm going to make the, the hanger and the wire piece that goes down the middle of this. Uh, I'm not going to do it complete because we need to finish turning this little the tenon off there. But it's actually a really neat little tool that I made. It's actually a, I'll use this here, it's a, a screw eye that I have a couple of connector nuts on. I just cut this off with a cutoff wheel, uh, if you can see up here, uh, with a cutoff wheel uh, to make my uh, hangers. You can use any kind of a screw eye, that's fine. Uh, I prefer to make them all uh, myself, so that's what I do. Um, I'm just going to use a piece of 16 or 18 gauge uh, galvanized steel wire. Perfect. So I'm flinging stuff all over the place here. This okay. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Well, it's not a real demo unless you forget something, right? I'll just set these pieces over here momentarily. And then, yeah. yes, so you'll see it. And this one kind of went off center here, and that's the, 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 the thing you kind of have to uh, worry about if you push it through too fast. The grain will pull the bit off center. Uh, so it is important to really take your time as you're boring that through. Uh, but if it goes off center, especially in this case, 
it really doesn't. All right, eighth inch. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. And this is one of those um, record power drive centers I like. It's uh, one of those six prong. This was, I think, one of the either half inch or five eighths inch one. I really like this one, especially in this application. What I'll do is I will use the, the drill hole and the flat face of that as my point. I'll bring the live center up. And as a miracle, that kind of lines up with that hole I drilled. So that's, it actually works. Put a little bit of pressure on there. And all I'm going to do is kind of do kind of a domed, a domed approach on this to create the, the top of a top hat. Very few top hats were really truly flat on the top. Uh, some of them had a little nice little dome on it. So that's all I'm doing with this. And as with the other parts on just the hat, I'll just do a little bit of 220. Now, obviously, I'm, there's a lot of um, dead air space here. You don't want to push a lot into that because that's where you, uh, it gets a little dangerous. It's basically the, the same things, the principles of eccentric turning. You get a little off that, that you can't put a lot of pressure on there. You see your, a lot of it, you're sanding air. You want to make sure that you're um, keeping the, the angle of the sandpaper consistent because if you start pushing, you're going to start rounding over corners. Um, and until you do that a few times, you don't really quite understand. Uh, but essentially, I'm just kind of cleaning up these tool marks here. Most of this is going to get cleaned up off the lathe. Again, I'm looking for my switch over here. <laughs> no. Yeah. When you get a chance, can you show your screw I jig? Yeah, I'll show that again. So my hangers that I use, uh, which I'm going to use this one here. Okay, the screw I jig I use is just a machine screw eye. When I bought it, this actually continued all the way around here. I cut this off here to create the hook that I need for making the hanger hooks that I want. And these are just two machine uh, connector nuts. That's all those are. Um, and I just put a little piece of uh, plastic in there to kind of make sure that all the, the threads line up here so I get a good even grip for my jaws on my drill. So I'll do this, put this back in my drill here. And if you have the option on your drill, I, in this case, I always set the, the, the torque to one because you get more torque, but slower speed. Because if you jam the speed up, you're gonna really wind things up and it's gonna be hard to control. So the way I do that, so I just take a long piece of 18 gauge galvanized picture hanging wire. You will find it at your picture hanging section of your local hardware store. <laughs> it's my only commercial there. <laughs> And I'll just kind of bend it a little bit like this. I'll use a set of, I use a set of electrician's pliers. You can use whatever pliers you want that are going to hold this. I just reach in here and these are old. I probably need to use a different put, uh, pair anymore because you can see I've kind of abused these doing this. And I, I get a real good strong grip on this. And then what I'll do is I'll pull this like that. And that gives me the hanger that I want. And what I'll do from here, just cut the end off. Can you hold that right between the center when you're done? Just like that. Okay. 
So then, let's see. I'm actually going to use one of yours here. <laughs> Get those are screwed on. <laughs> and just so you know, uh, most of the products I'm using here today, and I didn't do this on purpose, are available here um, at Turner's. And then from what I'll do from here is I'll start assembling this. Uh, let's see. Let me actually do one other thing real quick. I'll do this under here. Then I'm just going to start cleaning up this end here. Have the bucket there, right? That's right. Perfect. <laughs> All right, so let's start doing a little assembly here. First thing I'll do is I'll put the wire through. And the way you're going to look at this, oops, sorry. Is that I like to pitch uh, when I'm doing like uh, the two cuts, which creates a three section hat. It creates kind of a lean on it, kind of like this here. So what I like to do is I like to have that lean going forward. So what I'll do is I'll position the hook or the, the screw eye or the eye that I just made to be 90 degrees to that-ish. Uh, so I'll do that right here. And that's also the direction of this first cut here. So what I'll do is I'm going to bend that just a little bit right there. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of CA into the hole. And it's getting wicked into the hole. And it is going to probably leak, leak down onto my fingers here momentarily. So I'm just going to do this real quick. Just spray up this side here. So any that does come down, we'll get that and we'll cure inside the hole there. But from here, what I'm going to do, 
Make sure I have everything set the way I want. Put a little glue here. We'll let it roll around a little bit to make sure it's covered. And then this will allow me to, that's the hole there. And this is gonna look really odd for a bit, but keep in mind, we're gonna be doing some shaping on here. We'll hold that for a second. You can see it start to smoke there. Hopefully it's not my finger smoking. <laughs> Anybody who's UCA in any number of times knows that they uh, uh, can smoke their own fingers. I would say, if you want to know if you have CA, just spray it with the Yep, it'll let you know real quick. Okay, I would say that's cured enough, and then I'm going to do. Right, so if you don't get CA on your hands, do you even know your work? Exactly. And then probably what I should have done here is I'm going to cut this off a little bit right here. So I cut that off a little bit. And the reason I did is I don't want that sticking all the way through this hole here. Uh, so what I did here is did that. There we go. Sorry. Thank you. there. Let that sit for a second. And yes, it looks odd. <laughs> but this is where the fun part comes in. Um, I actually spend quite a bit of time off the lathe when I'm doing a lot of these because I'm spending a lot of time. These are obviously, the straight ones are obviously quick, they're easy, they're much faster to get done. Um, but these uh, the, that are curved, they're a little bit more whimsical. They're a lot more fun. And plus, if you sell them, you can charge a little bit more because the time you put into them. So, <laughs> And then what I'm going to do here. Yeah. So this is the same kind of cuts right here. Oop, there we go. You can see what that's going to look like there. And the beauty is if you do leave them a little bit thicker, you can do a lot more shaping with them. Uh, you can do shaping like this. You can actually carve into them a little bit more like so that makes them look like a little bit more floppy, so to speak. So you can actually make them look put like a put some wrinkles in it. Yeah, kind of like a, a Harry Potter sorting hat almost, uh, things like that. So you have some options with that. So once this starts curing and once I, I'm comfortable with how it's cured, I'm going to put a little drop down in the hole. This is where I start shaping. In some cases, I'll use a drill. Uh, when I start getting into these in, inside here, I'll start. I'll use my Fordham or a flex shaft tool uh, with a sanding drum. Or to get started to remove most materials, I'll use a, a coarse bit from like Sabretooth or from um, uh, Typhoon or something along those lines, just to re remove a lot of the material, just to get the shape going. But end up doing a lot of hand sanding with these.
the most segments that you've ever done? How many? Four, and that's this one here. Try to hold this so I can show it as well, sorry. From here, I'd probably switch to a drum. I probably forgot to bring a drum sander. You need a little drum? Yeah, about a half inch or three quarter, or something along those lines. That's small one. That's fine. That'll work. We'll make it work. Could always use rotary. Actually, probably could use this too to start with. Further, just proves to show that uh, no matter how much you prepare for a demo, you always forget something. Well, it's only been a couple years or more since I've demoed, so yeah. <laughs> you seen this okay? CA dust. Good stuff. Not good.
So all I'm doing, obviously, is just shaping it. And I'm just removing a lot of the bumps so that it don't lend itself to the design that I want. Um, so essentially, I've cleaned up the glue joints already, which is the main point. So from here, obviously, I just finished saying it. I'm pretty happy with that, that shape as far as being kind of like a silly, ridiculous little, little top hat. <laughs> just see if I'm on my toes, right? <laughs> darn it. Uh, I have to turn another one. Darn it. Uh, <laughs> but then from here, all I would do is just go through finished sanding. Um, it just Obviously, the, the heart, coarser grits are going to take a little bit longer. Uh, but that's exactly the steps I went through for these for these here to get to that point. And of course I glued through the hole, uh, but it gives you kind of an idea there. Do you ever use the drum sander and the lathe chuck? Sometimes, uh, it just depends on uh, how big it is. And uh, yeah, so the question was, is do I ever use the drum sander uh, in the lathe chuck? Uh, sometimes, yes. Uh, depends on the size of the drum I'm using or the size of the hat I'm making. Uh, sometimes it allows me to do a little bit more shaping that I want to do um, and kind of create more otter, otter shapes or uh, it gives me a little bit more free form instead of sitting there trying to hold it and kind of do all this, I can actually just manipulate the piece. Uh, so yes, I will use a drum sander in the lathe periodically as well. Any other questions? So essentially, that's the same way I do for the big ones, for the, the big hats here or the taller hats uh, for the freestanding pieces. The only th difference is I don't drill all the way through. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll stop my drill bit as I'm drilling about, yay, about almost all the way through. That way I get glue in there, able to stabilize it. I use the wire as a stabilizing function on, on, uh, for that. It uh, allows me to, to do the shape. I've seen a lot of them, uh, a lot of folks who have done uh, similar types of things, not necessarily for snowman hats or anything like that, but similar types of applications where they're segmenting and gluing and they don't have the support, so they end up failing at the joint. Um, so that's typically the place. You still put the wire in there. I still put the wire in there. Ah, right, so essentially what I do is I do exactly the same thing, I just cut the eye off of it. And you push it in from the other mm -hmm. side. Correct. So, uh, any other questions that I'm missing? Perfect. Just the two I'm standing on. <laughs> Sorry. Oh yeah, definitely. And actually, part part of the idea is uh, where I got some of this aside from going through watching um, like Tim Burton movies or the the, the box trolls where the the people have really ob obscene, ridiculous top hats. Is um, one of my friends, and she's contributed to the ornament design uh, or ornament contest before. Uh, Rebecca De Groot. If you look at some of her earlier pieces when she was in art school, she made uh, some furniture pieces. And there are a few other uh, art pieces, furniture art pieces out there where they actually do this type of thing uh, on the legs. And so you can see walking, ta yeah, uh, walking tables. You'll see uh, some really, uh, uh, Ocelot, correct? Yeah, Michael Ocelot. That's right, Michael Ocelot. You'll, you'll see some really interesting art furniture pieces. Uh, if you look at Rebecca de Groot's stuff, she has really interesting, she makes a lot of like mushrooms and uh, little uh, obscure things, but they, she calls them her, her walking mushrooms. 
they all have weird little legs. And she does the same kind of uh, thing, and she does support the joints as well. She does hers a little bit differently. Her joints will be like a little bit more like, more like this. But what she'll do is she will actually do a spline, like a, a veneer spline in them. Uh, so she'll take the veneer, like she, if she's doing walnut, she'll use walnut veneer in there. So the, it'll kind of disappear in there. But she uh, has a real fine um, a veneer saw that will cut a nice little line there. She'll fill it in and glue that, and then she shapes them the same way. So, yeah, uh, it's funny. You, know, you get to know some of these people, and uh, they become friends and stuff, and you start realizing how much your friends are influencing your work. So it's like, oh, okay. It's like uh, Rebecca taught me how to do some of the, the dye work that I do when I do dye some of my ornaments and things like that. So it's, um, it's really cool when you have really creative friends. So you can always share ideas and uh, bounce ideas off each other. Um, and, part, and some of the things that she taught me were actually during the pandemic. I'd be say we'd be talking and uh, chit chatting. Oh, where's the good? I, I'll look no, over. Good. Okay. <laughs> Don't want that. <laughs> no worries. Um, but you're uh, working with people that you or you become friends with online. Uh, we'd say, hey, you, you you got a minute online? Or all right, I can look at this camera over here. Um, you got a moment? I said, yeah, okay, let's do a quick live. Or let's go, we'll do a live chat back and forth with each other with Zoom or whatever. And it's like, here, this is how I did this. Oh, really? That's cool. Let's try that. So inevitably, you start seeing other people's influence on your work. And it's and your work changes. And it's, it's really cool. So I would say in the last three to five years, my work has really changed just because of influence and being able to, to do the digital, the online, the the, the, the Zoom meetings, the, hey, you know, let, let's do a quick live with each other. All right, cool. Uh, and so it's, it's really cool to be able to do that. Uh, so th that's what I would do. I would do the same basic thing for the, uh, the, the, the big ones. And the cool thing, I'm going to do uh, one of the, the heads right now. I'm going to do like a, a head like this guy over here uh, next. I've got one that I need to start and one I need to finish. So let me get that pulled up here. Hit my head on the corner there. Am I bleeding? No. <laughs> okay. Yeah. This is going to be the head. It's going to be um, this guy. So I'm going to show a cute, cool feature about this uh, drive center. I really like this one. This one is put out, I think it's put out by Rikon. Um, Got to meet the guy that made it. It was actually pretty interesting. Um, but it's a modern take on a stub center. Uh, and a stub center is one that's kind of a, got a spring-loaded center point, and, but it's got a safety shield around the drive. So if you, wanna, if you wanna inspect what you're working on, there you go, the teeth grab it. If you wanna inspect what you're working on, you can hear it slow down. You can stop it with your hand if you want. I've never, I've never, I've never been, uh, <laughs> I've never been keen on that myself. So I like to slow it down a little bit. There we go. So if you have something already done on there, you can stop and inspect it, things like that. Yeah, it's called the Badger. It's made. Uh, it's available by Rikon.
Uh, we were just talking about that here. Uh, the drive center I'm using is called a Badger. It's available from uh, Rikon, and it's basically a modern uh, safety drive center. It's kind of like a, a modern Steb Center. Uh, Steb Center has been around for generations within furniture makers, but it's uh, got a spring-loaded point, and it allows for being able to mount the piece, and then if you want to, like if I want to see if I'm round here, I know that this portion is, but if I want to see how far I am from round, I'll just loosen up the tailstock, back it off. I can tell just by the sound that the teeth have disengaged, so it's being held by the center point, and the, the teeth are being uh, guarded by this little sleeve here. So I'll back that off. It's starting to slow down, and now that it's round in this area here, I can stop it. So I can see where it's round, where it's not, and how far I need to go on certain areas here. And it's still spinning. I really like it because the teeth on it are really sharp, so they grab really nicely. The cool thing about doing these snowmen also is that you can use, you don't have to have a chuck, you can use a chuck, you can use a variety of chucks. Um, so uh, it's just like this tenon here, I made it just for, I made it for the size of this chuck. Um, I've also made them, I have a couple sets of chucks where I have, I'm able to do a one inch tenon so I can do really small pieces and that's where some of these smaller ones come in. Uh, so I, it just depends on what chucks and what pieces you have. Never have too many chucks. Spoken like a couple of true addicts. <laughs> At some point, that becomes more the objective than actually turning anymore, I think. <laughs> so what I'm going to do now is I'm actually forming the tendon that's going to go into the hat. Um, and what I've done here is on some of these, I actually haven't glued the hat on because I want to, I'm not 100% sold on this, this hat for this, um, this guy yet, so I haven't glued it on yet because I'm not 100% sure on it. Uh, but uh, essentially, I'm turning this tenon to go into a hat like this, this size here. So, and if anybody here in the studio audience wants to look at these, uh, by all means, once we take a break, we can definitely do that. Let's see. 
So this is where I was talking about how it's kind of important to kind of gauge the, the head, the hat connection here. What I do is I'll try to make it seem like if you actually look at it, the snowman is actually wearing the hat instead of just being propped there. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll measure this, the outside of the, the band here with my calipers. Then I'll do, I'll move it, expand it just a little bit, like maybe a sixteenth of an inch. That allows for a little bit of sanding and a, a little a gap in there for that. Put this back over here. And if you make too large of a tenon or too long of a tenon, it's all right. You can cut some of it off. Just a, it's just just. You got, I have enough material here, it's not a problem. In fact, I already know I'm gonna have to. It's just a witness mark for me, so I'm just gonna cut that down like that. And I'm already going to know I have to remove some. I'm just going to take it off now. Yeah, that's just to give me my witness mark of what to, to cite to for when I'm doing, shaping the, the, the head. That's probably where I'll cut that off at the bottom there. Again, do a little bit of sanding here just to finish shaping. Okay, now here's where the fun part comes in. We start laying out the face. And I like to do the faces on the wide grain, so where you can see most of the, the open grain. You can put them wherever you like. Um, so I'll probably put it on this face here. So what I'm going to do, use the tool rest. Create a center line like that. And then I'm going to create, I want to decide where I want to put the eyes. I want to put them um, somewhere on that line there. I'll put the nose right about here. And I'll put the mouth right about here. And you can design, and when you start getting to drawing and designing the faces, this is where the fun part is. If you don't, if it doesn't come naturally, <laughs> this is going to sound funny. And this is what I doodle when I'm at work. What I'll do is I'll sit there and I'll draw faces. Eyes, mouth, eyes, mouth. People walk by, look at me, and go, Tim, you all right? I'm fine, thanks, I'm good. <laughs> um, but essentially what that does is it allows you to start kind of designing and seeing what faces, what work what don't, what like smiles work, what don't, eyes work, things like that. And then you work with the tools you have and that gives you kind of your design. So what I, I will do is I'll take my, I have a scratch all here. I will, for where I'm gonna put the nose, take the center point. 
And it's just a mark. And then I want to do the eyes. You don't want to do them too narrow because then they look a little psycho. You don't want to do them a little too wide because then, then they look psycho as well. You kind of want to have um, the corners of the mouth kind of in line uh, with where the, the, mouth, the eyes are going to be. So I'll say like right about here. But then you want them to be evenly spaced as well. Now you can do any number of things. You can use a set of dividers to, to mark that off so you get that. But you get to the point where it's almost, you can almost eyeball it pretty well. So I think by doing it like that, uh, eyeball, eyeball the eyeballs. Da -dunch. I see what you did there. <laughs> uh, so yeah, and then, and then the, however you do the eyes, you can do it. So if you do like a wide open mouth, if you open this up a little bit, you could actually do eyes that are kind of like this, and he's laughing. Like this, you can do them like that, where they're just open-eyed and smiling along those lines. I've got one that I'm going to finish up here when I, as far as the finishing process here um, to show you that uh, how I finish them up this way. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go back over here. I'm going to use my wood burning tips to kind of show you what I do from here. Uh, so let's take this off here. Finish. Oh, there it is. Okay. So in this case, what I use, I use a, a razor tip wood burner. Um, let's see. And I'm using a heavy-duty uh, skew. It's not, it's not on yet. Don't worry. <laughs> These do get very hot very quick, so it's important to pay attention to where the tip is. When it's glowing red, it will burn. Well, even when it's not glowing red, it will burn. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, it's starting to warm up here. I've used, I've even used an exacto knife before I got this. I used uh, an exacto knife that I just heated up with the torch. Uh, obviously, be careful with the torch. You want to, I used, when I did that, I used a torch that did, had one of those like trigger offs. So when I let go, it turned off so it's not running while you're doing other things. So you don't want to do that. Um, and like I said, when I did some of these others, I did, uh, I don't know if I have them here, but I used a, the tip of a soldering iron just for like doing the eyes and even, I even just, uh, use dots for the mouth, created the smile with just uh, several dots on it. So even a soldering iron is a really good, and most people have soldering iron. Soldering irons are really great little tools to use for uh, wood burning. I guess I'm going to do like laughing eyes here. <laughs> That'd be fun. And that's the beauty of it. There's no wrong way to make a snowman. So I'm going to do this guy kind of laughing. One thing I didn't show is I need, and I need to, is uh, how to drill a hole for the nose. It's really hard. You drill a hole. And you can do a couple different things here. If you have um, the fine tips or fine bits with uh, your, your Dremel or your Fordham, uh, or other flex shaft tool, you can just cut this stuff out, or you can also just burn it out. Tim Brick is in the chat. He wants to take you out to dinner and get you started home. <laughs> uh, we can discuss that. I'll, uh, I'll message him later. 
He probably wants one of the ones I just did. I, uh, I also do a lot of gnomes, which is why I kind of came up with this design right here for doing the snowman, just the head and the hats. I, I do a lot of gnome, a lot of gnome flavored de uh, decorations, uh, snowmen, uh, leprechauns, things like that. I'm very well known for that. <laughs> My son is over here cringing. <laughs> it's not enough that he gets all the dad jokes at home. They are. I'm trying to get him equipped for when he's a dad. It, it comes naturally. How are we doing on time? Just curious. We are at an hour twenty-eight. Okay, this won't take too much longer then. And so from there, I would just continue to do that until I have it uh, burned out the way I want to, as far as having an open mouth. Um, and you can, maybe you can see. Can you see how it's kind of open in here now? Now, real quick, one thing I do want to do on this, I'm going to set this here so it doesn't touch anything. That will be hot for it. The cool thing about using the razor tip is that it actually cools off pretty quickly, too. So, I am actually. And I'm just going to drill a little hole for the nose here. And what I try to do is depending, I try to position the nose depending on, or angle the nose depending on how I'm, the finished product's going to be. So you have to kind of decide if he's going to be kind of his head cocked back or laughing a little bit. Like this guy, since he's kind of laughing a little bit, I'm going to turn his nose up a little bit because I'm probably going to have him doing kind of a laughing since his eyes are squinty and all that. I'll probably just do this this way. So I'm going to angle his nose this way and I try to get it pointed right towards the center. Yeah, it is. You, you know the drill. <laughs> I'm going to make my son cry before we even leave. <laughs> Let, let's hear some dad jokes, yes. I do. There's not a lot of content on it yet, so this video will probably be on there once once we're done. Oh, so I'm gonna. The question was, do I have a YouTube channel? Yes, I do. Uh, there's not a lot of content on it yet. Yet, uh, this uh, video I'm gonna I'm planning on putting on there as well. Um, so, Instagram. Instagram is the best for me. Uh, you'll see some of my videos on Reels there. Um, uh, so that's typically what I do because I could usually do them spur of the moment. Now, uh, what I'll do here, generally what I'll do is I'll paint the eyes, whatever I do. You'll see that on some of them I've like, bored out just little round little holes. I use a burr on my Dremel uh, or uh, Fordham, whichever tool I'm using at the time. And then I'll paint the holes. Uh, so I want to make sure that I, I get them dark. Uh, and it's just like it's a piece of coal like it, you would be in a regular snowman. So what I'll do from there is I will paint them and, I'll get the, and I'll, then I'll sand them afterwards. So do the magic of television, I've already got one that's kind of that way already. This guy's going to be a, a singing snowman. Let me get set up here to get him squirt away. I think this one. Don't want to deal with the spindle down here. <laughs> Is it okay to take this out? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So part of the reason I use a spindle adapter and I'm using Chad's Chucks versus mine is that the lathe I have is the, one of the, is the Herald. And I, since I have one of the first eight that were in the country, I have one of the only eight in the world that are a one-eight spindle. 
<laughs> so as you can see, I've already shaped the bottom of this one to do the kind of lean back and um, shape on that. So the thing to keep in mind is when you're doing this, you can see my marks here. <clears throat> Maybe you can't, but I've got the hole drilled out for the nose. I've got the mouth shaped and I've got the eyes here. So let me just stay in this real quick and we'll get that all so you'll be able to see that. And the paint I use when I do, I use milk paint. And the reason I use the milk paint, um, and I, it's, I don't use expensive milk paint, I get like the milk paint from the craft section at Walmart, um, is that, for one, I can never seem to use enough of it before it goes bad. So why spend a lot of money on it, for one? But I also use milk paint also because it, it dries hard. Um, so it's not gonna be like a lot of acrylic paints that will melt when you start doing sanding on them or things like that. So there's a lot more solids within the milk paint and that's why I use it. Still keep reaching. <laughs> it's still not there. Okay. And so aside from a little dust, you can see that he's going to be a singer. And I had to do a singer because I spent a lot of years as a choir boy. <laughs> Now I'm going to make the nose. Well, you know what that means, so. <laughs> exactly. It's not what you thought it would be, was it? <laughs> My son's cringing more, more and more. He's at that age. Oh, that's true. No idea. Brick said, what are a hundred rabbits jumping backwards? And I don't know the answer. I like it. I like it. <laughs> it's a receding hairline. Brick, that's a, a, a bald joke in this company. <laughs> so I am turning the nose here so I'm coming up to an idea that I want to have his nose oh I'd say probably be about three eighths of an inch long so I'm using a long piece here and since I used a quarter inch hole I'm going to do this a little bit kind of a snub nose here and I will actually kind of Round it over just a little bit here. And yes, I will round over the back a little bit. A reason being is so that it actually makes the joint look a little bit nicer when you uh, attach it. Yeah. And then what I'll do actually before I cut it off is I'll actually dye it. Okay. Right there. 
and I'll just use my compressed air to blow out the, the eyes and the, the mouth here after he's died, and then I'll uh, clear coat him with uh, some lacquer. Now, obviously, with some of the ones I have on the table, I've, I've painted them, that's fine. I, I, the way I like to do them is I like to do them where I either have contrasting woods, and if I don't have contrasting woods, that's where I do the paint, and it's a, it's a really nice way to do that. Um, so, but that's pretty much it, how to do it. Would you mind showing some of the finished ones? Yeah. I like the look on this one, it's great. So if he's, like, think of him, if he was out caroling, this is what he'd look like right here. This here, and when I do a bunch of them uh, around the same time, I'll make the hat so I can actually do it like I did with this one here. We can determine to see if that will work that way, or which works better. I'll make a few hats for different times, and we just do this. So, obviously, I have a few hats. I have a few more to make, but that's essentially it. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. You can definitely go into a production mode, uh, especially, especially going to the holidays. And I'll phrase it this way: I work. I basically have one day off a week, so I've been already been making Christmas ornaments and snowmen for about two to three months already. That's because I only have one day off a week. So even when it's still 110 degrees outside, I was making snowmen <laughs> um, and uh, my other Christmas ornaments and things like uh, ones that I have already in the, in the auction for the fundraiser. I need to bring you one or two more, by the way. Um, um, but um, I actually meant to bring them today. I forgot. <laughs> so, um, but, um, but yeah, uh, as you can see, I've got some over here. These were some of the first ones I did. Um, uh, if you know somebody who does crochet, my, my mom made these, so I just hot glued these on. Uh, do that. Uh, you can also use, um, well, you, I use ribbons uh, sometimes for doing around the scarves for some of them. There's, there's really no limit to them. This guy here, these are carp or uh, upholstery tacks. Some people use uh, uh, hot glue buttons onto them. Uh, so there's really no, no wrong way to do them. And that's the great thing about them. You put your own spin on it. They're creative, they're unique to you. Uh, and that's the, the amazing part of doing the snowman. And there are a lot of people who collect snowmen out there right now. And, it's, and they're, they're fun. That's the main reason why, why I keep doing them is they're, they're fun to make. And each one is, is unique, just based on the facial features alone. And I guess if you're painting them, too, you could use whatever wood it doesn't matter. Exactly. Got so them. I got to the point where I had such a stockpile of one flavor of wood that's like, okay, it's great wood, there's great features in it, but I'm bored with it. So uh, I got to the point where I would start just painting them, and that's how I started doing that. Um, and then you get to some of them, you can have fun with them. So if you have a nice little display... Uh, especially when you start having kids and grandkids around, you can have some that are uh, hide treats. So you can haul them out, put a little treat underneath, and right on the table. So they'll go look for the ones that has the treat underneath. Uh, so it's a little fun thing to do as well. It is. It's exactly it. You just put a little uh, some eyes and a nose on it, and you're good to go. <laughs> Tim, you got a lot of people saying you inspired them, and uh, they like the demonstration. You want to give them your Instagram one more time? Sure. Uh, you can check out my work uh, and I, uh, my snowmen, my gnomes, a lot of gnomes. And I, actually, this last year, I did a lot of mushrooms, too. Um, a lot of carving and painting on those. But that's what about I, wood turning? Any wood turning? Uh, a little bit of turning. You just did a lot of mushrooms. Oh, and my bad. Wrong, 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 wrong subject altogether. Okay. Now, turning mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the funny thing was is that when I started turning the mushrooms, I started getting hit up on Instagram by all the, the head shops. There and I'm like, well, yeah, no, no, not my jam. <laughs> but... Yeah. Uh, you can catch me on at Turning by Tim on Instagram. That's my main one. And that is my YouTube channel as well. Uh, like, as I said, there's not a lot of content there yet. This, I'm going to add this to it as well. Um, thank you for coming today. Thank you for uh, uh, joining in. I, I hope I have inspired you. Um, I hope to see a lot of, uh, of uh, snowmen out there. Yeah. Please tag me uh, at uh, Turning by Tim or even my name, Tim Wadley. Yeah, everybody, go give Tim a, a like and a thumbs up on his page for doing this demo for us. That was awesome. Thank you. And if you have any questions, I'm sure he's happy to help. I'm happy to answer them, yeah. Somebody wants to see the green-hatted one. Can you make this The green-hatted one? one, maybe over here. Okay. Anybody in the room here, we'll, uh, we'll hang out a minute if you've got any questions live. Any, anybody on the live stream, if you want to see anything or ask Tim a question before we go, now's your chance. Reminder, you have till the 20th to get your ornament in. 
Hopefully we'll see some cool hatted ornaments now coming mm -hmm. in this next week. Yep. Uh, um, the, one of the ones I submitted is uh, uh, one of the cool hatted ones. So Yeah, very cool. Well, awesome. Thanks again, Tim, for coming. Oh, my pleasure. Anybody else? Any questions here? We'll catch up after. Yeah. Just Thank a oh. quick question. I'm yeah. really a beginner. How do you get the, the roundness out of the head and have the eyes and nose, whatever, come in the right place? So the question was, how do you get the roundness out of the head? Sure. It's, it's practice here. Now, you can take a look at this here. This is the, the first one here. And the cool thing is about these is most everybody is, is going to work on it. You need to work on trying to work on a sphere to start, start with. And it doesn't have to be a perfect sphere. Uh, a lot of people do try to get for the perfect sphere when they start out with doing the, uh, like the snowman. It's not necessary. I mean, you can. Great. If you can get that point, that's awesome. But think about the snowman you make in New Hampshire. <laughs> and I'm sure that I, it's been long since I've made a snowman or wanted to make a snowman uh, physically, but it's like none of them are ever perfectly round. There's always some little odd, odd shape to them or whatever. Uh, but then if you think about, uh, and I'm not sure if you've seen like the Nightmare Before Christmas or the, um, the Box Trolls or any of the like the Tim Burton um, animated shows like that, there's not a perfectly round. They're really obscure, odd shaped, almost triangle. Like, um, I'm, gonna, I'm getting to the point where I want to make a snowman based off the mayor of Halloween Town, which it's not round at all. It's almost triangular. Uh, so the, the key is, and this is where a lot of people have a hard time, practice, play with it. There's no wrong way to do it. If you don't like it, set it aside. You may come to, it may work with another design you come across later on. Um, I can't tell you how many pieces of wood I've hauled around for years and years. Something I started literally 20 years ago, and I'll look at it and go, oh, yeah, I can do that now. I figured I knew how to know how to do that now. Uh, and that's that's normal within the wood turning community, right? <laughs> I, sometimes you find a really cool piece of wood, and you think, oh, I'll make this out of it. No, and then case in point, this piece of wood here, this was my last piece of blood wood on this one that I had, and I was digging through a box and went, oh, I can do a neat, neat little shape, shaped hat with that. And I, it's one of my favorite species. So it's like, it's... There's no, no wrong way to do it. Um, so that's where the, the, the phrase is, in, in practice, practice, in practice. Uh, a, lot, a lot of things I've seen over the years, uh, a lot of people think if they have the Vic Mark Lay, the Vic Mark Chucks, or the biggest bandsaw on the market, that they're, that they're the best. No, it's all the time in front of the lathe. It's all the time practicing. That's where it is. I know a couple of masters who work on Harbor Freight lathes. <laughs> and uh, uh, Eli, uh, Paulie? Uh, yeah, but I also have a friend, he has a Harbor Freight laid in his patio, mm -hmm. and he doesn't clean up very much. And in fact, there's like this little hole where he stands and trying to lay the rest of his chips. I don't know what that's and, about at all. And then he'll reach, <laughs> reach into the pile of chips and go, oh, there's the tool. And yep, then yep. Pull it out. Well, there's a, the trend when you get too busy turning, you, you start, you just start like just doing this, so you, so you can keep working. And like he's talking, you literally have like a horseshoe piles of sawdust around where you're standing. Uh, but the key part in anything becoming proficient and becoming good at it and feeling comfortable doing it is practice. Um, so there's no right answer to, to your question, <laughs> but just practice. Um, so like if I'm working on this, I'm like, eh, this doesn't work. I may turn this down even further, make a smaller one if I decide that this doesn't work. Uh, so play with it, really, just play with it. And like some people were, somebody was saying in the, uh, the chat, make a psycho snowman. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with it. Yeah, um, always practice. Exactly. I mean, if you ever uh, read any of the Calvin and Hobbes cartoons, he was my favorite when I was in college. There's a guy out there making snow goons, you know, where he's got, he actually, I think he's in Florida, so he has access to some of the coral. So when he, when he dries it out, if it dries out, he'll soak it in the water again. So he's making these snow goons where you see the body and you have these pieces of coral that look like branches holding a head, just holding a head. <laughs> so you have snow goons from like Calvin and Hobbes. So the, the options are, are endless. Uh, so have fun with it. That's the whole thing, play. And this is supposed to be a fun hobby. So, I mean, have fun. Awesome. Well, thanks, Tim. Sure. Thanks, everybody, for coming and watching online. If you're online, go check out Zach's uh, demo today. He's going to be doing something cool. Awesome. And uh, we'll catch up with Tim on the next one. Thanks again, awesome. Tim. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. That's it? You guys can clap loud?